Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Osric 51, and today I want to go over some more Atlas patch notes. Now, we have a ton of new information, a ton of new patch notes, because we just had the first um, developer stream for Atlas, which they will be doing a ton more of these. I don't know how often, but they're going to be doing more of these for probably all the a bunch of the major versions. Um, and I want to go over these patch notes, which is what they talked about in the live stream. Now, they talked about a lot more stuff that I'm going to be going over in other videos, but this is just the patch notes. Um, now, this is related for late February version 16, just version 16. Um, now, they did just announce um, just in-game version 15, which has an ETA of tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern, 19th of January. Now, there's a massive list of changes and stuff here. These are all like changes, balance changes and stuff. Um, and there's more coming soon. They also did talk in the message in game. They actually talked about new stuff being added. So I didn't want to go over these um, until that whole list is out because we know there's going to be more in this list, probably new stuff as well. So I'll go over that um, next video when we have all the stuff. But I want to go over this stuff that's coming in February. So first we have new features bounty system for pvp don't like a particular player or company set a bounty on their heads then other players can get gold for bringing in their target's head so this is basically the bounty system they told us about before and that'll be um at the start you can set as players they can set bounties on players or companies i don't know how setting a bounty on a company will work i'd assume just any head from that company would work um but a player sets it and then um they basically set where you have to bring the heads to and then you get the gold for it i'd assume it's going to be some automated system so they can't just say thanks for the head and not give you gold now they also did say that they will be adding later you know um bounties for like ships and other stuff like that which is a pretty cool system definitely adds more to it actually has a use um a use for the noose um then a use for the second thing here guillotine hang your foes and a noose taking too long off with their head so basically if you've never seen a guillotine you can just look it up you basically put someone's head in a little thing and a big blade drops on it and cuts their head off and it plops down into a little container um so that's gonna have an actual use now because bounties you need to collect their heads then we have one of the biggest things they showed us about submarines explore the depths of an ocean in the small scouting submarine no weapons on board but it does have a claw arms to help harvest the ocean floor and explore and demolish shipwrecks so this is really big and something that's pretty cool so they did talk about this submarine or submersible before with the airships before the game was out and this is going to be what i think is probably the next tier um, above what we have right now and that is more of the golden age stuff which they're not going like super techy stuff. This is most of this stuff is looking steampunk inspired, like the airships, the submarine. So it's like steampunk, which is kind of like, um, kind of still in the era. Like that's kind of when steampunk stuff is. Um, but instead of like steam, it's going to be the magic in the world of Atlas that runs these things. And we are going to be getting the magic tarot system some point in the game's future so this is the first thing of that tier that we're getting and it's nice that it's a submarine it's for harvesting the ocean floor because they will be adding um really deep trenches in the ocean that are super deep down so you're going to need one of this for that that there's no weapons i think they said it can hold five people in the stream and people can walk around in it and you put it on the um dinghy attachment you can attach to boats um and you can just leave it in the water or attach it back up to there so it's really cool that they have this that there's no weapons it's not an attack vessel you can't attack anybody with it but you can you know go harvest you can go explore the oceans um and demolish your shipwrecks much easier so i think that's a really good way they can that they did it without having any weapons and it being another combat item player shops and free ports players can set up automated shops in each free port listing loot for sale and naming their own gold coin prices so basically what this is uh, we don't know exactly how it's going to work but you'll be able to set up a shop i'd assume as a company i assume they're not going to let singular players do it unless it's a singular player in a company um and you'll be able to set up a shop that you could set 
your prices. I assume it's probably going to have something. They could probably just do something like some interface, like, I don't know, World of Warcraft Auction House or something like that. Some version of that, kind of, to where you just see all the players' names or the company names. And it shows the resources they have. It shows how much gold coins per that item. So you can set your own rates. Um, so if you set super high rates, no one's going to buy it. But this is also really good. So you don't have to directly trade and possibly get attacked or, you know, people try to steal from you, stuff like that, to get the different resources in the game. Because if you don't know the highest tier blueprints in the game, a um, mythic require. So say if you're making something that takes hide, you need six different types of hide in that amount for that hide. You, you would need, you know, six types of fiber if you're mythic, which is the highest one. Um, every rarity level below that takes one less um, version of that. So being able to trade back and forth, get these things so you can actually craft your higher blueprints that you're getting. Because right now it's super hard, especially... Um, with most islands being claimed. So that's a really good system to add to the game. It'll definitely add a lot more community to this game, which this game has actually done a pretty good job of creating a community around it already. New creature, giant crab. It can carry heavy loads along with players, tanks, and wild creatures. That is pretty cool. Um, so I think they did have basically this in arc. Um, what was it in... It wasn't Extinction, the one before that. I can never think of the name because I never really played it. But they had a giant crab that you could pick stuff up with and was really big. I assume it's not going to jump around. But it's going to carry heavy loads, so a lot of weight, making it utility. You can carry players, tames, and wild creatures. I'm wondering if you can carry, if you can pick up enemy creatures and like hurt them while you're in it. I mean, we already have that with a lion for some animals, some smaller ones, and for players. So I assume you'd be able to. But having it carry heavy loads is really nice we need more utility um tames that are just based on utility can carry more stuff like that tame tokens are available for more mythical creatures allowing players to have limited time tames of the fire elemental rock elemental cyclops and gorgon bonus rock elemental and cyclops are rideable so this is really cool um they already have this in the game with the dragon which i don't even know if anyone on official servers have gotten a dragon yet i doubt it um but these tame tokens are really cool. So basically you have to get these tame tokens and go tame the creatures. Um, but it's limited time. So the dragon is eight hours. I'm wondering if these are going to be eight hours as well. But that's really cool to have something you can work towards at. Um, you, could, you could get one to go attack someone with it. You could get one to go kill a boss with it. Um, depending on how strong they are. But that's really cool having all these different ones that are um, time tame. So you don't get to keep them forever. You get to keep them for probably not even a day. But they're super strong, so you get to do cool stuff with them when you have them. New cosmetics. Get your pirate on with hook hands and peg leg cosmetics. They talked about this. They showed a screenshot of it. Um, so hook hands and peg legs. They also did say that you'd be able to have two peg legs and two um, hook hands if you wanted. So that's pretty cool. New armor cosmetics to customize the look of your company and crew. They showed this as well. Um, I was talking about how they hide your armor that they leaked. I thought would be real armor. It's not, it's a skin. They showed four different skins. Actually, they showed five, but they showed four, like, actual, um, not in game. So they showed basically art versions of them. So we don't know exactly which one we were getting. Um, it was the four versions were just like different, like, cool looking versions of all the different armor types. And then the last one was an Army of the Damned, um, like, cosmetic skin. Um, I thought they said that that would be in later, so I don't exactly know which that is, but new cosmetics are pretty cool. I wasn't expecting them to do cosmetics without the cosmetic store out yet, um, but they are doing it, and they look pretty good, actually. Streamer stealth mode, client option to disable showing all location information, super useful to prevent stream sniping. Just, I mean, there's nothing else to really say about that. Added a new deep ocean trench environment to explore with powerful underwater creatures and is home to the new giant crab. So this is what I talked about with the big trenches. Um, new powerful creatures. We don't know what all the new powerful creatures will be. But this is where you're going to have to go to get the giant crab. So the giant crab, which seems like one of the most powerful tames, since it can carry a lot of stuff, can carry players, tames, and wild creatures. Um, you have to go to the bottom of the ocean to be able to tame one of these. How you're going to be able to tame one of these? No idea. Because you won't be able to do it the normal way, I don't think, bowling it and feeding it. So no idea. 
but it's really cool. And they were talking about, um, they say environment here, but they were talking about that this is basically a whole new biome um, under the ocean, which is really cool. So possibly a seventh like resource type, maybe. Um, but it's really cool. Added a new extensive polar dungeon, only accessible by Pathfinders who have all the power stones or have defeated the Kraken. So basically, this is another super end game thing. So if you don't know, there's nine power stones in the game you can get right now from defeating various bosses. Then when you have all those, you're able to summon the Kraken and attack it, which they are nerfing in this patch up here. But right now, the Kraken doesn't give anything besides a skin. But when they add both of these, which we'll talk about down here, actually right here, you get feats. So basically, the Polar Dungeon is just a big dungeon. You have to fight tons of stuff throughout. We don't know exactly what it's going to entail, but when you complete it, you get a feat just like when you complete the Kraken um, after this update, which they said no one has completed the Kraken on official servers yet. So it's good that they're nerfing it. Uh, maybe some people actually do it, but I would definitely wait till this patch. So the reason you're waiting till this patch is because beating the Kraken unlocks a new feat, which allows you to prevent wild creatures from aggroing on them until within range on them within range for a period of time so basically it makes you some no wild creatures aggro to you for a certain period of time now this could be extremely useful for going to golden age runes and doing stuff that you want there having everybody do that that'll make it so once you kill the kraken it'll be super easy to go do stuff on the golden age runes depending on how much how much uptime this feat actually has and it's a new feat so i don't think it's a skill you have to learn i think it's just a feat that they give you which is really cool. Beating the Polar Dungeon unlocks a new perfect water breathing feat, allowing players to remain underwater for a period of time without consuming any oxygen. That's really cool as well, just adding more to the underwater world. And they're, you know, starting to fill that in more. Now they're giving you this thing where you can activate it and not consume oxygen for a while. I'm wondering if it refills your oxygen when you activate it or if it keeps you low. Um, but still a really cool way that they're adding an actual reward for doing these endgame bosses even though no one's killed that amount official so who knows if it doesn't give a ton of other loot or something updates player can mount a sail to directly control the sails open slash co close amount and rotation settings in a more intuitive way so basically right now you have to hold e on a sail and then you know click through one wheel click through another wheel to change sails um, speeds to change direction and you'll basically be able to get in it like how you mount a turret or something they said it'd probably be like wasd or something to change them um so that's really good because right now if you don't have npcs your ship is severely lacking and this will be able to make it so even um if you don't have npcs if you have players with you they'll be able to do it pretty effectively aod ai ships will now come in multiple size variations with different stats and difficulty levels so that's army of the dead and they actually showed this in the live stream so basically the army of the army of the damned ships we have right now are the medium version they're going to be adding a smaller version that they said was half the size of ours right now and then a much bigger version that's much rarer but is double the size of the one we have right now so that's really good they said they weren't increasing the amount of ships so you're going to be seeing um a lot of the small ships and a lot of the medium ships and rarely the big ships which is a really cool way to add more variation and add smaller ships that are much easier to kill so you don't have to have like a super good ship to kill the medium ones and then the big ones you have a higher tier thing to work towards if you're a bigger company if you have good ships you know how to fight them now global territory message updating so that's basically what they're talking about was um you know the spam you get for if someone's being if someone's trying to take your claim um, people dying all that type of stuff i think it's mainly the territory like claiming and stuff that spams your screen um they're changing that in some way we don't know what that is yet though any dead ships any dead ships shipwrecks from your company appear with a unique icon on your map now so you can find the wreck so basically right now if your ship gets sunk it just shows the ship icon that's there and you can't spawn or anything so you have to go to it to see if it's actually sunk so now it's going to be a shipwrecked symbol for your company so if you want to go salvage it you can know what ships are actually destroyed character creation now is a height slider to make it easier to set your character's desired height so there's a new customization 
option for player's territory map when on display allies is teal colored thank god this is a massive change so basically right now if you have an ally their claims are still red to you even though you can't attack them they're blue if you go up to their buildings if you go up to their players but their claims are red so making them a different color is super good especially since there are a ton of islands that are um, split up between a bunch of people who are allied together and if other people attack it's super hard to defend because you have no idea because it's three it's like multiple different companies so you have no idea which um, claims are theirs or which claims are someone else that took those claims so this is a big big change especially for people with lots of allies um, sharing one island which is happening a lot more than I think most people realize um, we're gonna use claim flag notifications so they no longer clutter up the entire HUD when lots of enemies when lots of messages are flying by um, I think this is the same thing. I don't know if these are different or not. They kind of seem to be the same thing. This is what I was talking about, the global territory message updating. Um, so I don't really know what if those are that much different at all. Then miscellaneous streamlined ship hall rendering for performance gains. So that's basically what they specifically talked about is when you're on the water, like the ships aren't giving you too much frame reduction when you're on the water usually even if even if there's a good amount of ships around you like sailing out in the open sea your frames are much higher in other areas but if say you have a big base or you're sharing base with allies and you have a big port with tons of ships your frames plummet when looking at it because it's just so many items so many things to render in so they're basically making it so the overall main um basically mass of a ship is going to be better is going to have better rendering so you get fps increases performance gains less stuttering stuff like that all good stuff and it's very good that they are starting to do um client side and user side uh performance increases server performance improvements around two another plus 25 percent so that's like basically you're paying to the server how much lag the server gets um just making the server be less and less laggy is always super good um it honestly seems as good or better than arc at this point even with like 50 plus people in a grid so that's really good hope they continue to do that and make it a super smooth game because if a game like this becomes incredibly smooth with good frames that'll bring so much more people into it because that's one of the big um you know keep ways of players coming in is you know bad performance the rubber banding stuff like that and then just bad frames so people like Frames are pretty bad right now, and especially going from like a lot of other games. Um, you know, the people are used to having 100 plus frames on the same system. It's hard to go down to like 30 to 50. Additional balance changes. NPCs will be added to free ports, which allow players to redesign their characters' tattoos for a gold cost. Significant server improvements over the coming weeks, where we'll be doubling performance increment by increment. So there's more performance increases. So that's all the patch notes. Um, really good stuff here. I assume they're going to be adding more because it is late February. They'll probably this list will probably get pretty big by then. I'll be doing a video about all the stuff when we get the rest of the patch notes because there's more notes to come. Um, probably when it'll be out, I'll probably do a video on it unless it comes up before then. But anyways, subscribe if you want to see more Alice content. Leave a like if you like the video. Leave a comment down below what you think about Alice as a whole. What do you think about all these all of these changes? Um, what do you think about the direction the game is going in? And thanks for watching.